Let's move on then. Number 17, proposed penalties for completing construction without permits, pages 142 to 156. Director Moreau. <clears throat> yeah, I just want to thank uh, Peter for these, uh, this report and uh, the, the investigations and the examples. Um, uh, I think that what we, we've seen a couple of iterations of this report and I think on reconsideration um, and reading this in a little bit more detail, I have significant nervousness about us entering in to assessing culpability and the ramifications thereof. So my inclination is, um, and obviously you want to hear from the rest of the committee, um, that we should avoid that and have a more simple penalty structure. Um, I think that uh, going forward, the uh, if it's a complicated structure that we try to impose, um, when structures get more complicated, they obviously, um, there's more risk of there being holes in it. And if we don't find the holes, someone else certainly will. Um, or people will be paying people to find the holes. So I have a little nervousness, so I, I think that uh, I'll just uh, stop at that point. And so I think the matrix A is really not somewhere we want to pursue. That matrix B um, needs to be further discussed, but uh, I think that at this time I wouldn't, well, I wouldn't support matrix A as far as uh, the penalty structure. Anybody else? Director Turnbull? Yeah, I agree with Director Moreau. I think that to go with A, and thank you because we did ask for this, um, it does <laughs> illustrate to me how we could be spending a lot of ta staff time and we might be, be challenged on an uneven application of these kinds of things. So that is my concern. I do prefer option B where we do the double fee, but then what we do is we charge for staff time. I'm quite in favor of that because I do think these kinds of things take a lot of staff time to try to figure out what to do now after they've gone ahead. And I would very much endorse that kind of idea. Peter, could you explain option A versus option B? Because I had a hard time with this report. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I, and I guess I should try to, to back up a bit. I know one of the, uh, the things that came out of the last discussion on this when it went to committee was moving, amending our bylaw, building bylaw to move to, to a, a double fee instead of the one and a half times fee. And, and you'll see further in the meeting here that that one of the proposals um, to amend the building bylaw. But um, where uh, the initial thrust to was to penalize people who uh, built first and then came with hat in hand later. And uh, when it comes to to the legislation surrounding penalties, we have to be careful about how we assign penalties and fees. We can't make a fee for processing a permit seem like a penalty. There's been a, a like a fine, rather. Uh, there's been a, a wide acceptance of a double permit fee philosophy amongst all local governments, and that's sort of acceptable. But anything beyond a, a double permit fee um, structure by way of tickets and fines and this type of thing is, is sort of above and beyond. Although we, we are able to do that under the Offenses Act is to issue tickets for certain things that we've identified as, as uh, ticketable under a, uh, a bylaw. So going to uh, matrix A, if the first example shows, shows a, uh, um, an individual who perhaps built a, a small shed on a side yard, didn't know they needed a permit for it, uh, was clearly correct probably that they didn't need a permit for a shed if it was under 100 square feet, but didn't recognize the need uh, to comply with zoning setbacks. 
So uh, in this particular instance, um, if they responded immediately to a letter saying that we, we had a complaint and we didn't, uh, um, we didn't know that we were violating any kind of rules, if they responded to that through a letter that we advised them of their problem uh, quickly, uh, there would be no need to proceed with any kind of fine because they'd be coming to the table to legitimize their issue, either remove or relocate the, uh, the shed and uh, apply for a permit if necessary if they wanted to keep it there. But um, once advised and if there's no response from them, then this would put us into an assessment of, of uh, okay, we haven't heard from them. We need to motivate them somehow. A fine is one way to do it. And then the amount of the fine uh, in this case is, is um, there's five categories where they could be uh, 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 assessed under and, and all five would apply. Uh, did, were they aware? That would be the culpability factor. And no, it's low on the list. Uh, so uh, a number one would be assigned to that. Is it significant? Um, that shed on a side yard, um, I mean, the neighbor may have exactly the same thing. And the only other uh, person that may be affected could be the neighbor. And the neighbor may not care. So it's not very uh, significant, the violation. There's no history would be the third category. Um, uh, it's the first time they've put a shed up, and um, so there's no repeat offense in this case. The deterrence factor, is this something that we as a regional district want to deter categorically because it's in a high-profile location, for example? No, probably not. So the deterrence factor would be low. And uh, the only other variable would be the recalcitrance factor, and that uh, if they're willing to, to deal with the issue after a ticket is issued, then... Um, uh, they would be willing to solve the problem. So there's, they're not flouting the bylaw. They're not ignoring us. They're willing to come to the table. But uh, so the fee, when you add up the points, would be five points, and then that would equal a hundred dollars. And uh, we tried to make it as objective as we could have, uh, still responding to the wishes of the committee that we needed to do something to encourage people not to do things uh, cart in front of the horse. So, Peter, is that $100 plus the double permit fee? Yes. And this is for, Matrix A is for building permit issues. Matrix B is for zoning issues. Is yes. that the difference between the That's two? That's correct. The, the, first, the first iteration of this system was uh, uh, including also fines under the zoning bylaw. But uh, uh, after double checking with uh, with our legal counsel, they, they, this is where we, in, we got the information that we have to be careful about how we fine for, for um, permit fees. And um, the double permit fee is, is something that, uh, especially on the planning side, uh, is, is the extent to which we can go. So that prompted the notion, OK, perhaps what we should do is look at different uh, application fees for different kinds of projects. So something simple like a shed on a side yard could be categorized as a simple permit and a fee associated to processing of that could be set at whatever it might need to be set at, either $800 or $1,000. I've used, I think, um, $500 as the example. So because they built it without a permit, if they wish to keep it there, then there's a double permit fee, which has been standard practice for quite some time. Um, if the project is, is more complicated and involves uh, riparian assessments, um, uh, perhaps right-of-ways that have been violated, uh, setback issues on foreshore to water courses, uh, that becomes more complicated. There's more staff time involved. It may involve other levels of government. It may not. Um, moving then to more complex um, uh, application where there are several gov layers of government involved, First Nations approval, um, there is a reluctance of the owner to deal with the issue. Um, there's surveyors involved, necessary surveys, and uh, um, perhaps water leases, and uh, uh, in some cases uh, alterations to the foreshore that, that are complex. Uh, those would be categorized as complex applications and warrant a lot more in the way of staff time to process. So 
that's the kind of range on the planning side that maybe is appropriate in this case, and it's, it's certainly subject to discussion. But if somebody wants to go ahead and build something um, that is complicated and without a permit, they can't expect to get off with a relatively with the same fee in my mind as somebody who's just moving a shed or has built a, a, a garage a little too close to a property line. And essentially, those are the same uh, the same fees for that type of of work. You mean the same? Similar the, fees, I should say. But it's relative to the value, correct? Not uh, on the building permit side, yes. On the on the development permit and the variance permit side, it's not. Uh, it's a standard application fee, and and that's it, or standard permit fee, and that's it. I should say. So, the, so in other words, the the development permit stuff is still matrix A. Or is that matrix B? That's matrix B, yeah. It was proposed originally as matrix A, but we had to steer away from that from a legal perspective. So all we're looking at suggesting uh, that the committee review is, is the potential of having perhaps three different fees for development variance permits and, and development permits based on their complexity. And on the building permit side, um, when uh, somebody's applying for a building permit, which of course we can't issue until a development variance permit or development permit has been approved, um, it involves a lot of staff time in reviewing often the development permit application to make sure it's going to fit into the building code parameters and building bylaw parameters and then processing that building permit as well. So hence the double fee on the building permit side. And in order to ensure that the, the owner um, is moving along with this process, the thought under matrix A is to establish a fine schedule that would in, incite them to, uh, to move ahead in a systematic way towards compliance rather than just ignoring us. Okay, Director Morrow. Yeah, thank you, Peter. I think that, um, I think that's, uh, you described what I understood and I think that, uh, I think that uh, basically looking at the recommendation, I think I have to stick with, uh, I, I, I would propose on the recommendation that certainly option B for development permits, I think uh, it needs to be explored and again referred back to staff to further flesh out. But uh, my inclination is that uh, the option A, the culpability matrix, I'll just repeat myself, is just not something that I think that we can support and justify and go forward. So I think um, unless something else came forward that uh, we could, uh, in addition to further that the SCRD amend the building bylaw to double building permit fees and with no limit, um, I think that I on that matter. I would say that would be it. The next, the, the question on the B though, and um, maybe I'm um, missing this and maybe it's because I'm new, but um, what are our options for collecting these tickets or fees on zoning? As far as a, a ticket goes, uh, the, uh, the only option for collecting a ticket is um, um, sometimes issuing another ticket for the same offense after a time period, 30 days for example is enough incentive to show that, that we're serious. Um, if those tickets go unpaid, the first ticket will eventually go off to collection agency to uh, for collection. So that's on the ticketing side, whether it's MTI or Ben, either, either would go that route. Um, on the planning uh, permit application, I think that's a standard fee. Correct me if I'm wrong, Steve, but I think that's a, an upfront fee that is uh, paid and, and uh, you have to pay that fee before you, you move forward with the application. So it's paid in full up front. So if I may, you mentioned um, three levels of development permit fee. Where is that being proposed based on complexity? I uh, didn't, that's, that's before the fact. So is that a new proposal? That that would uh, it, it, it's a it's a proposal in this report, and if the committee wants to move forward with that, then we, we would be happy as staff to bring back a report pr proposing exactly that that planning those planning fees for de processing development permits and development variance permits be structured into three categories with permit fees assigned to them accordingly. 
So you you haven't put that proposal together formally? No, no. We what? Forgive me, Madam Chair. We wanted to make to see if the committee was agreeable to that before proceeding with that work. Thank you, Director Morrow. I guess just to follow up to my original questions on <clears throat> option for collecting penalties and fees, um, and I guess this is again on transgressors where a development permit wasn't taken, the changes were made, and now we say we want all of this. So other than going to, through court order and asking for deconstruction, what are our options for collecting our penalties or double the penalties or the zoning uh, development penalties and reimbursing um, staff time, which is really what this describes, what are our options other than a collection agency? Um, or is that it? Thank you, Madam Chair. The, uh, if somebody ref simply refuses to pay, and that the light just went on, if somebody doesn't want to pay a development permit fee and they ignore us entirely, then you're quite right, Director Moreau. The only option is to uh, uh, go to the self-help remedies uh, under the Local Government Act, place a notice on title, um, give them a direct order to comply, uh, get a court order for them to, uh, to comply. Um, if fines are proven in ineffective or there is no willingness to issue fines, then uh, you know the ultimate uh, decision could be to uh, get a court order to remove the, the construction. And if they still don't comply, um, the local government, the Sunshine Coast Regional District in this case, could actually go and, and have the work removed, uh, have the building demolished if it's a building that is the issue. And the cost then would be recoverable through taxation. And uh, I think that's been attempted once in the past with somewhat success, but the legacy of that particular scenario is still with us. So you can't um, levy the fine against their taxes? Uh, the, the small fine under the Offenses Act, if it's an MTI or a Ben ticket, you, if you suspect that this person isn't going to pay. What you can do is start a process on the other side uh, of the table by which you can seek a court order to, to pay those fines. So rather than sending it to collection, you would actually go to the provincial court and, uh, and uh, seek an order to pay. Then what that does is it brings the, uh, the uh, offender to uh, the judge and the topic of discussion is not can you pay it's how do you want to pay do you want to pay it all at once or do you want to pay it in one or two chunks but if you don't pay it you're in contempt of court and, and that has its own life so that is another option um, it's rarely used but it is possible to go that route mm -hmm. and in that regard <clears throat> um, how much of the costs, those costs are recoverable by the SCRD, the court costs and the legal costs, are they all recoverable or non recoverable? Madam Chair, to answer that, the only costs that are recoverable in that case is the amount of the fines. And often the cost to recover those fines um, are a lot higher unless it's gone unless, unless the, the regional district has been diligent in issuing a number of fines, then there may be cost recovery uh, based on the amount of the total fines. But, um, and this is why this rarely ever does go to court is because the cost of pursuing it often exceeds the amounts that are retrievable. So unless we're talking thousands of dollars in unpaid fines, it may not be worth our while but then you can also do it as a matter of principle rather than recovering cost. Director Turnbull? And you could put a notice on title, correct? So that, that comes up when they transfer. Okay, so um, I did hear Director Morrow have a suggestion for <clears throat> further work on this. 
Can we hear that again? Yeah, I think it's basically um, the recommendation received, obviously, regulation. Um, currently enforced, I think that we want to make sure that we act on the double the building permit fees. I think we made that decision. That so already. I think that, that going forward should come in number two of the recommendation. Number three, option B of the enforcement methodology to be used for disincentive. <clears throat> um, and further that option B be further refined with a schedule at a future meeting. Um, I may have missed something. I just didn't want to lose sight of I know that that recommendation number 16, the construction penalties has already been passed. I'm not sure we need to restate that. If we don't, well, let's just leave that out. So I, I don't think we do. We've already, that recommendation has been made and passed. So, um, so what we would want to do is just have what's in item three, but only option B and ask for it to be further developed, further refined, and come back. So, is that the direction that you want to take? Is there a seconder for the motion? Um, what kind of refinements are you looking for? I think staff might need some direction. Director Morrow and then Turnbull. I think that um, the concept is there. I think it needs to be simplified as much as possible. I go back to my original statement that if we complicate it, people will be driving buses through the holes and being paid to do so. So I think we want to make this as simple as possible and as very succinct and uh, that the decisions taken from the guidelines be easily justifiable without course recourse for um, challenging by the people that the fines are imposed on. So that's, other than that, I don't think that we, we, we want to constrain staff any further than that, in my opinion. Director Turnbull? I agree, and it occurs to me that really what needs to, re what's remaining is how we would calculate the staff time that we would add, and it seems to me that you could use some of your work in the matrix to figure that out and perhaps get some grades, you know, zero through eight, <laughs> depending on how recalcitrant they are. And perhaps a, a table might be helpful in that regard. That's what I'm thinking. Something like that, just not to lose all the matrix work you've already done. It seems to me that could be helpful in figuring out staff time so I have a question for Director Moreau. If the culpability issue is a problem in matrix A, why isn't it a problem in matrix B? I'm sorry I missed that point. I think that I want us assessing, and I see recalcitrance and culpability in both. I think we want to look at matrix B, trying to assess the penalty that correlates to staff time, not the actions of the transgressor. Okay, we don't want to pass judgment on the acts of the transgressor that is assessing culpability in any way. So basically what, yeah. what I'm hearing is that we want to delete the culpability and recalcitrance sections and, and keep it to how significant is this and what kind of staff time is required to address it? Um, Director Seegers. Um, on page 156, when they're talking about uh, addressing the two issues you're looking at, looking at it, it would depend on the staff actually um, putting in multiple fines. So you'd have a dollar value, but it, if it kept going on, they would be fined again and again and again. So that would bring in the, um, you know, ad addressing the, co the applicant's uh, behavior. But it's based on the complexity of the project rather than the other 
and it's up to, st to staff then to <clears throat> go back again and again and again to add additional in. Is that my, am I correct in, in that? If I may, Madam Chair, I, I, I think Director Moreau has a, um, a thought here that no matter what happens, if you build it first and then you come to get a permit, there's an automatic double fee. But perhaps what we should do is track the additional staff time involved and then charge that back to the applicant. And that, that might be an approach that we take rather than and letting that just being an, an honest uh, fee for service uh, as opposed to a fine where we need to make a decision on how culpable, how recalcitrant. And maybe that in itself will be the deterrent or a future deterrent. Are there not charges for special inspections already? Uh, there are on, on the building permit side. I don't believe there are on the planning development side. Hey, Director Lewis? Yeah, I was just going to ask you a very quick Yes, I like it. I, you know how I feel about building without a permit. I'm absolutely opposed to it. Okay, so I think we need to hear from Tracy about what she's got from our <laughs> yeah, discussion. <laughs> okay. The Planning and Development Committee recommended that the Chief Building Inspectors and Bylaw Managers report dated October 21st, 2013, titled Proposed Penalties for Completing Construction Without Permits be received, and that a regulation process to initiate fines for contraventions of zoning or building bylaws for all electoral areas in addition to the double permit fee philosophy structure currently in force be implemented and that option B in brackets I have the um, the definition of option B which is amend the zoning bylaw fee structure to incorporate new fees for simple applications that could be doubled if built without a permit and higher fees for complex applications that could also be doubled out of brackets of enforcement methodology be used as disincentive for construction without permits related to both building and zoning bylaw infractions. And further that option B be further developed for a future planning and development committee meeting um, addressing issues such as calculate additional staff time, delete culpability and recalcitrant significance. Okay, I'm a little bit confused because you're putting in both A and B in here because I thought B was about zoning development permit kinds of things but then we've got building permits in there as well in the recommendation and I thought we were <clears throat> leaving that out so we just would be dealing with all the things that fall under the rubric of the option B and it's to reflect staff time required to address the issue director Nora I just have a question here we're going to charge them staff time, right? That's the idea. And if they ignore it, we're going to double it? Is that what I hear? How are we going to get away with saying that um, yeah. staff time was double? Yeah, I, do, I, don't th I think that was a mistake in there, too. The staff time part of it isn't doubled. Uh, Madam <clears throat> Chair, if I may, I think there's always been a... Uh, if you build first and then you come to ask for a permit, uh, the standard protocol is to double the permit mm -hmm. fee because there's a lot of retroactive work that has to be thought through. If there's, if there is, if there will eventually be three sort of fee categories on the, on the planning side to to deal with the, the complexity of the application, if for some reason those the doubling of the permit fee was not enough to cover the staff time, then there would be a per hour fee added to that. In, mm -hmm. I assume that this will be a subject of a future report. But if there was enough staff time built into the double fee to co cover the costs, then it would stop just at the double fee. But I think what Tracy had in the resolution was that the staff time would all, could also be doubled, and I think we want to take that out. Yeah. No, that's, that's not the intention. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Yeah, yeah. So that re reflects the complexity. If it's simple, the double fee should take care of it. Director Seegers. 
I thought that we would do double fee and staff time, that the double fee wasn't to cover the additional staff time. That was a double fee for building without the building permit. Staff time is additional to that. Director Lewis. So basically the double permit fee is a, is a, a wrap on the knuckles and then you have to cover the staff time. Uh, Madam Chair, historically what, and to answer uh, Director Seeger's question, the, a single, like a, a no penalties, single building permit fee is established ideally to recover most if not all the cost of processing that permit and conducting the inspection. Where work has taken place beforehand and they come to get a permit after the fact, then there is more work involved, obviously, but it's not the intention to to double that staff time. Uh, that's covered in that double permit fee because there is a component of staff time that's estimated for that that project. So, the uh, the additional penalty, if you will, then would would be over and above the double permit fee, but it would be just at a per hour rate and not doubled, and it would only be. It would only take effect if, if the double permit fee didn't cover those expenses. Uh, I think where you're going is admirable, but I don't think that <laughs> the committee wants to go there. Thank you. Director Turnbull? Here's what I think about it, is what the double fee should cover is what staff time would have been recovered, uh, used in the beginning had they got it. So it seems to me that the single permit fee would cover, and then any additional staff time over the uh, normal fee should be added. And the double penalty, like the, the doubling of the permit, is the penalty. So it's, it's whatever staff time would, it would have been used in a normal application is covered by the double permit. But then any additional, as a result of the failure to get it, ought to be added at a certain rate. Okay, direct, Director Noor. Oh. Okay, go ahead. I, I have to agree with Director Turnbull. I think that the any staff time used in addition to what would have normally been used for a regular permit fee needs to be charged. The double for coming after is not necessarily, it is a, it is a penalty. And penalties, when you get a, a penalty assessed, it's not to pay for services. A penalty is a penalty. So I think I agree with what Director Turnbull is saying. Director Noor and then Lewis. Yeah, I follow up on that. Peter, I've been involved in two sort of building permit problems that you've had, one in Daniel Point, one in, in Half Moon Bay. And the amount of hours you alone have put in, plus the inspectors, I don't think a, a double fine even comes close to that. Director Lewis, oh, go, go yeah, ahead. I, I'm, I'm on the same track as these people. I think the double permit fee should be the penalty, and any costs should be added to that. Over and above what would have been covered normally. Yeah, like the over, over, no, just the double permit, double permit, double permit fee is the penalty, and costs start right at the penalty. I don't agree with you on that. Peter? Madam Chair, two things. I think we can we can probably um, include that approach as an one option, and then the other approach as another option in in the future report that would come. Um, before I lose my train of thought. Oh yes, the uh, permit fees are, uh, as you know, are an average permit fee based on time uh, and on the small permit value applications, we spend a whole lot more time than what the permit would normally render, even in a non-penalty uh, situation. And at the other end of the scale, for example, the hospital, uh, we rely on those larger projects to, to offset those times that we're dealing with permits at a loss. Um, we gain on those bigger projects, and the average is what we set. And uh, it's not set based on a, on a 
a, a per hour basis. It's just set on what costs we generally charge or find ourselves dealing with uh, based on a particular project. So if we used a, uh, a, a per hour model, I think you'd find our permit fees for the majority of our permits would be way more expensive than they are. And I think that's probably not a very fair model to follow. It's certainly something that many other local governments don't follow. Uh, it's a subsidized fee and the more, the larger projects will subsidize the smaller ones and the average is what we end up with. That said, when we end up with a penalty situation, you know, those two options I think will come forward in a future report. Director Seekers? I agree in, with what you're saying that they average out that way. But what we're talking about is specific, a specific situation where somebody hasn't come forward initially. And this is a penalty for not following the rules. So I think that's what I'm hearing around the table here is that it's a penalty. And next time you'll come forward first and well, you'll be in the <clears throat> other, you know, category. I'm hearing two different things. I'm hearing no services are covered with the double fee. And I'm hearing normal services are covered with the double fee. I'm hearing both of them. Um, so I don't think we have consensus here. So as you suggest, perhaps we should have both options presented in a report so that we don't belabor it now and run around in circles because we don't agree. So that's what I'm hearing. Now, uh, the other issue is this three levels of development permit. So can we do this motion first and then we'll tackle that idea? Does everybody understand the motion? Do you want it read back again? Okay, could we hear it please? Well, I, all I'm hearing is that we're de deferring it to a, a further report. Yeah, what's in the report we, though? That's the question. Back. Um, that I need. Okay, what do you restated. have? What have you written? I have, well, I have that we include additional staff time, delete culpability and recalcitrant mm -hmm. significance. Um, anything else we can add on to that? And so the, um, the two options be brought forward. Uh, one that the double permit fee um, covers no inspection services or no staff services and that all staff services would be additional on an hourly basis. Option two is normal staff services to be expected under a building permit to be covered and anything over and above due to the, um, the nature of the, uh, the issue be charged on an hourly basis. So that, I think that's what people want to see. Okay, all in favor. Now, so then we have the issue of under development permits and development permit variances. Peter's suggesting that we ask staff to explore three levels based, three permit levels based on the complexity and amount of staff time required. So we would want a staff report bringing forward those options. Director Morrow? I would move that we get a staff report exactly describing those options <clears throat> in, in more detail than is yeah. described here. Okay, that's been seconded. All in favor. <clears throat> 